Guys, we were treated to a lot of Premier League football this Sunday and we're going to be covering some of it, starting off with Arsenal versus Liverpool, two teams who were in the ascendancy in the Premier League, uh, teams who came in with some injuries. So we're going to be covering the game. We're also going to be covering some of the other games that went on today and, and also on Saturday as well. But the focus is going to be on the Arsenal versus Liverpool game and we'll also have some some comments on the other game. So as mentioned, some injuries. Liverpool came in to this season playing very very well Arnie Slot has implemented his style and tweaked how Liverpool have gone about their business and from a Mikel Arteta team standpoint they've done really well some unfortunate circumstances with the red cards in games some injuries losing Martin Odegaard having the services of Saliba due to his red card against Bournemouth and with that Obviously, being in the the mindset of, of some of the Arsenal players and fans, it was about getting it right against Liverpool. Uh, Liverpool weren't void of their own injuries themselves. Uh, Jota being out, another one, Alisson, who was who was also out in the team, and again they weren't at their full strength. However, both teams had no excuse. They both had to perform. Liverpool were looking to show that they had reached a level to be that next team to challenge Man City, and from Arsenal's perspective, they were looking to do the same. So as mentioned, two strong lineups. You have Arsenal going with Havertz and Trossard up top. Something that they've done consistently since Odegaard has been out of the team. Martinelli on the wing. Saka coming back into the team after his injury and much needed. The base of the midfield, Rice and Moreno. And the back four of Timber, Gabriel, White and Party. And it was interesting to see how Arsenal were going to line up. There was a lot of discussion. I even had it with my friends last week in terms of if Saliba comes out, what would your potential lineup be? Obviously, the Calafiori injury hadn't been confirmed as of yet. My preference was to potentially play Timber there if Calafiori was fit. Calafiori wasn't. And so, we know Mikel Arteta isn't afraid to play Thomas Partey at right back. And I thought he performed pretty well, but we'll get into that as we, we look through the events of the game. From a Liverpool standpoint, Gavin Birch at the base of the midfield, Jones and McAllister providing the support both defensively and going forward. Salah, Nunes and Diaz up front with Trent and Robertson at fullback and Konate and Van Dijk at centre-back with Kelleher at the back as well so two strong teams not 100% as we've mentioned but that should have no bearing and no impact on how they should perform and so coming into the game and we'll go through the events Arsenal were I would say very intentful Liverpool were showing their strength as well but Arsenal came into the game looking to exploit that left hand side going to get Robertson with those balls over the top to Saka a couple of occasions Robertson dealt with it really well but on the one occasion he didn't Saka absolutely skinned him he absolutely destroyed Robertson a beautiful ball by Ben White that's what Arsenal were, were looking for as an advantage with Ben White being in that position yes Saliba can do that but Ben White and Saka have a connection that not many have and he can play that ball perfectly for him he plays so many different types of passes for him at right back so to be able to get that ball off at centre back was impressive and Saka took that in his stride was able to turn Robertson as mentioned and slot the ball brilliantly into the back of the net great work from Arsenal and it was a lead that I would say that they deserved. The intention was there. If we look at the momentum, as mentioned, Liverpool were in the game in the beginning and Arsenal kind of gained that up until they got the goal. After Arsenal scored, it was really Liverpool who, was, who were dominating, to be honest with you. Um, the moment calls it out clearly, Liverpool were in the ascendancy and Arsenal seemed to regress, take a step back. I'm not sure exactly what that was, but you've got to keep your, your foot on the pedal. And there's only so many mistakes you can make before someone's going to capitalise. Thomas Party made a mistake. Moreno made a mistake. It just wasn't clean. It wasn't to the level that you would expect Arsenal to perform after they've got that goal. And they let Liverpool back into the, the game. Dyke with the header. And it was opposite of what you probably expect. Arsenal have been really good on set pieces, both defending and attacking. And yet, two weeks in a row, they've been quite susceptible. Van Dijk, the header, I think it evaded a number of people. And there was a slight flick on at the near post. But again, I think Liverpool deserve to come back into the game, get that 1-1 and take what they thought would be a, a, at least a 1-1 a, a draw into half-time. However, that would not be the case. Um, Arsenal, as soon as they conceded it, turned, turned it on again. And I don't know why it takes going down for Arsenal to pick it up a little bit more, but that's exactly what it it took and they were dominating they should have scored many 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 more chances in, in my opinion a bit wasteful not making the right decisions in the final third but after that Liverpool goal they were essentially in dominating and it should have been maybe 2-1 2-1 3-1 4-1 as we approached half time and 
luckily for Arsenal, they took advantage of one of their chances. Another set piece, top goal scorers in the Premier League in terms of set pieces, and a brilliant delivery by, delivery by Declan Rice. Absolutely stunning. Uh, finds Mikel Moreno, who was on the end of that. We saw his qualities in the Euros coming on the end of crosses, and he showed it once again. And Arsenal went into half time, uh, looking like they would continue kind of doing what they were doing. They were that dominating up until the goal that you would think it would continue. The game kind of ebbed and flowed. The injury to Gabriel was the big turning point for Arsenal. They lost, obviously, Saliba coming into the game and losing Gabriel shortly into the second half completely changed Arsenal's momentum. And Liverpool were aggressive enough to change the tide as well. Thomas Lai coming on, Gakpo, Mikas as well coming on, and, and, and a lot of changes which you can understand. That was compounded by the injury to, to Timber, but it's this period of the game where I have a lot of issues with Mikel Arteta, uh, particularly around the area of being proactive and not being reactionary because from the period of around Gabriel going off 55 minutes to the 70th minute or just maybe slightly under that Liverpool were in the ascendancy they were looking like they were going to score Arsenal weren't and yet maybe you have weren't seeing the level of high level opportunities created against them they were losing control of the game. And so it's this period I'm talking about now. So if we look at the 55th minute, for example, when Arsenal, Gabriel goes down from that period all the way into the goal, Liverpool have a lot of domination and a lot of the ball. And for me, I would have wanted a substitution right around here when Arsenal weren't looking great. And it was looking a bit dry, if I'm being honest with you. They didn't make the change. A mistake, I would say, by Gabriel Martinelli when we had the ball very wasteful once again gives uh, Liverpool the opportunity on the counter-attack to go forward and uh, Darwin Nunes finds Mohamed Salah at the back post and he's able to slot the goal in. Liverpool take a 2-2 draw. The game ends. There was some controversy before the game ended. We will cover that. But for me, that was that was the nail in the coffin in terms of the game. Uh, both teams, after that goal, seemed to not really resign themselves, but... The urgency wasn't there from either team, even at 2-2. Every old Jesus came on, Ethan Ranieri came on, 85th minute. That should have happened 10 minutes earlier, 15 minutes earlier, in my opinion. Be aggressive. You're at home, why not? And, and a lot of these substitutions are like for like. If you want to take Saka off, you could have earlier. You could have taken off Trossard. You could have taken off someone up. I'm, I'm just, I think it was a little bit too slow, in my opinion. It was the moment when... If you all won the ball against Somersley and it looked like Arsenal scored, Havertz had got the ball past Kelleher and Gabriel Jesus had slotted the ball in. However, the referee had blown his whistle. Everyone is asking the question of where was the foul? For me, there was no foul. Like, there was no foul. That wasn't the only mistake from a referee standpoint. Gabriel Martinelli essentially gets taken out in the box by Konate. VAR says nothing. The referee says nothing. And I'm not going to go on the whole rant of the referees are against Arsenal, but the standard of refereeing in this country is abysmal. It's disgusting. It's not good enough. And the referees have too much power. I'm sick of hearing these referees on TV bending you know, their powers and saying, well, he made a good decision here or he made a good decision there, so we're going to ignore the poor decision which could have changed the outcome of the game. Unacceptable in my opinion. And so covering this game 2-2, I think Liverpool would definitely be the happier team. Obviously, you've come away to a rival if Arsenal went, you know, two went down twice against Liverpool at Anfield and came back 2-2. You'd bet I'd be happy with that. From an Arsenal perspective, it feels like a defeat. If you're going to be honest with you, you've given up the lead twice in a game that you should really be winning. Individual performances stand out. Saka, that goal was brilliant. I also give Rice a shout out, Ben White as well, in that position was very, very impressive, filling in for uh, Saliba, I think Gabriel was really good as well, marshalling back four, and it's unfortunate with the injury, Timber was doing a really good job against Salah, before he went off injured as well, Martinelli I thought was a bit wasteful, very wasteful and it's a theme, Abbott's I thought was decent, Trossard as well, but they weren't impacting the game from an attacking standpoint to the level that they probably should have. Uh, Party was actually quite good at, at right back, to be honest with you. I've got to give him his props as well. From a Liverpool side, Salah gets his goal. He's he showed his, his quality time and time again. Didn't have the easiest of games, but that goal solidified his, his quality. Van Dijk, again, was really impressive. Robertson, I thought, wasn't that good. Neither was Trent. A lot of his passing was off, but in the moment, it was needed. It was really good. 
I thought I thought that Liverpool saw out the game really well. It was a game that they they couldn't lose, and they sh- they really didn't want to lose, and they didn't, and they got what they needed out of it. Arsenal should have won, and they should have done more to win the game, in my opinion. Both teams will, will recollect. Both teams will have a successful season, but will they come out with a league title? It's yet to be seen. We're going to cover some of the other games on Sunday very briefly. West Ham United versus Manchester United, a game that I mean it it, it puts into comparison. The two teams who were who were struggling, West Ham haven't had the best time since Lobotelli has been in. What um, Manchester United have been struggling for a while, as we know, and this continues and compounds where they are. Um, it was a game we had which had a lot of opportunities, a game which probably should have resulted in a lot more goals. Um, the key talking point uh, for my United perspective will obviously be the last minute penalty that Bowen put away. However, I think there's a, a wider problem obviously the officiating is one uh you look at it and it's it's doubtful at best that that's a penalty um even though man united are rivals of arsenal you, you have to call it uh where you see it but again it just i think there's an atmosphere around the club um a game that you probably shouldn't have lost and losing it against a team that's struggling will hurt the man united fans a lot from a Ten hard perspective i don't know if uh any of us really have that strength and desire to really change think it kind of gives them a, a way of assessing and deciding and potentially using that as a talking point to distract from other things that may be going on around the club um but from a team standpoint united needs to look at what kind of team they want to be um losing a game like this is less than desirable especially when you find uh that they're going to still be in 14th place um nine games in that's definitely less than um desirable from a Man united fa- uh, fan standpoint Looking at Crystal Palace versus Tottenham, again, a game which would really, really um, cause into question Tottenham, who have been in really good form as of late, but they come into games like this where they dominate the game, um, but aren't able to actually extract anything out of it. And I think Crystal Palace did a good job of, of holding them at bay. They had a lot of the ball, but weren't able to do anything of it. Normally, Tottenham have a lot of the ball and are able to do it, do a lot with it, but their, their finishing is normally wasteful. This time it was a little bit different. Uh, Mateta with the goal to send uh, Crystal Palace home with the three points and to send Tottenham home, uh, unfortunately, very disappointed. And I think the fans, the manager who showed his disappointment after the game, will have to look at this performance um, because this is the team that you know has been performing so well and they would be expecting a lot more and they didn't get it. The last game that we'll be covering is the Chelsea versus Newcastle game. Chelsea running out 2-1 winners. And I've been really, really impressed with Chelsea, to be honest with you. Uh, Cole Palmer doing what he does, but he's not the only one who's impressing me from a uh, Chelsea standpoint. The way they generally play football has been really, really impressive. Um, There was a disallowed goal in the beginning. Uh, Nicholas Jackson scores from a brilliant team move. I mean, I'm again, rivals of Arsenal, but you have to call... Great football, great football when you see it. Um, Newcastle got a goal back with uh, from Ezak. It wasn't the greatest goal that you've ever seen, but Newcastle worked hard to get themselves back into the game. And then a goal by Cole Palmer to to uh, solidify the three points for Chelsea, who bounced back after losing um, to Liverpool. And again, I think Chelsea are in really good form. I think they played a really good football. They've got a team who has quality all the way throughout. And they'll be making some people eat their words. How high can they climb? It's yet to be seen. But on current form, they look to me like a top four team, to be honest with you. Um, defensively, it's going to be a, a question of can they keep people out? But going forward, they're showing a lot of quality and a lot of class, to be honest with you. I think the Casado-Lavia partnership is where they thrive. Two midfielders who can work really hard and two midfielders who this season are finding their feet. Guys, this has been quick recap of today's football hopefully you've enjoyed it uh we'll be covering some more games during the week and i'll catch you guys soon make sure to like subscribe comment and i'll see you soon peace